In the last lecture, we started with the differential kinematics or the velocity and acceleration analysis of four bar mechanisms. In this lecture, we will continue with this theme of differential kinematics. We will study velocity and acceleration analysis of the slider crank mechanism as well as the inverted slider crank mechanism. The velocity kinematics problem for the slider crank mechanism can be formally stated as follows. Given the link lengths, the angles theta 2 and theta 3, the position of the slider which is denoted by d, and the input angular velocity omega 2, we want to compute the angular velocity of the coupler denoted by omega 3 and the linear velocity of the slider along the x direction which is denoted by d dot. Note again that implicit in the velocity kinematics problem statement is the fact that we have already solved the position kinematics problem, that is we know theta 3 and d. The procedure for solving the velocity kinematics problem for the slider crank mechanism is analogous to what we did for the four bar mechanism. We will start with the loop closure equations. So R2 is our vector O2a, R1 is our vector O2c, R4 is the vector Cb, and R3 is the vector Ba. The loop closure equation at the position level says that R2 equal to R1 plus R4 plus R3 or R2 minus R3 minus R4 minus R1 equal to 0. And we have seen this before. We have also seen that R2 can be written as a e to the power of j theta 2, R3 as b e to the power of j theta 3, R4 as c e to the power of j theta 4, and R1 as d e to the power of j theta 1. Now since this loop closure equation has to be valid for all values of theta 2, theta 3, theta 4 as the mechanism moves, therefore the time derivative of this expression will also be identically zero. The time derivative of this expression here leads to the following equation. So let us go through the steps to see how we can go from here to here. First note that theta 4 is a constant. In this picture theta 4 is 90 degrees and c is also a constant which is the opposite of the slider from the x-axis. So the time derivative of this term will be zero because everything here is a constant. Next, look at the terms a e to the power of j theta 2 and b e to the power of j theta 3. Here the variables that change with time are theta 2 and theta 3. We have seen how to take time derivatives of this kind of expression in the module 1 of lecture 9. If you recall, d dt of a e to the power of j theta 2 can be written as a times d d theta of e to the power of j theta 2 times d theta 2 dt by chain rule. d theta 2 dt we can write as the angular velocity of link 2 which is omega 2 and d d theta of e to the power of j theta 2 can be written as j e to the power of j theta 2. So from here we have this first term here. The second term can be analogously obtained by taking the derivative of b to the power of j theta 3 which gives rise to this term. Now when taking the time derivative of this last term here you should note that theta 1 is constant and in the picture shown theta 1 is 0. d changes with time so you have to be careful about taking this time derivative. So d dt of d e to the power of j theta 1 is e to the power of j theta 1 because e to the power of j theta 1 is a constant it comes out d dt of d. I'll denote d dt of d by d dot and theta 1 equal to 0 degree. So e to the power of j theta 1 equal to cos theta 1 plus j sine theta 1. If theta 1 equal to 0 degree this comes to 1. So this term becomes just d dot. So this is our velocity level loop closure equation. Now let us look at the physical meaning of this equation. The first term here is Va or velocity of A with respect to O2. This is because the first term was obtained by taking the time derivative of R2 which is the position vector of A 
with respect to O2. The last term here, which is the d dot, is the velocity of point B. This is because B dot is the x component of velocity of point B and the y component of the velocity of point B is zero because this is a sliding joint here. So the entire velocity of the point B is along the x direction. The middle term here is the velocity of point A with respect to B. This is because we obtain the middle term by taking the time derivative of R3, which is the position vector of point A with respect to point B. We will now see how to simplify this equation and solve for the unknowns d dot and omega 3. So this is the equation we had in the previous slide. And as before, we have to expand these complex exponentials using Euler's formula and then simplify. So expanding the complex exponentials using Euler's formula from e to the power of j theta 2, we get this term. From e to the power of j theta 3, we get this term. Now multiplying out and equating the real and the imaginary parts to zero, we get the first equation from the real part and the second equation from the imaginary part. You can see this in a straightforward manner just by carrying out this algebra. The first term here will have j. So I have j a omega 2 cos theta 2. And in this term here, I also have a j. So this will come here minus b omega 3 cos theta 3. Now j omega 2 times j sine theta 2 gives me j square a omega 2 sine theta 2 and j square is minus 1. So I will have a minus a omega 2 sine theta 2 here. Similarly minus j b omega 3 and j sine theta 3 gives me minus j square b omega 3 sine theta 3 which becomes plus b omega 3 sine theta 3 and this minus d dot will be there equal to 0. From here you can easily see that this is the real part which is here and this is the complex part which is here. Again the unknowns in this equation are omega 3 and d dot. Furthermore in the second equation you just have one unknown omega 3. So from the second equation you can solve for omega 3 directly and you get this expression for omega 3. Once you have solved for omega 3, you can use the first equation to solve for d dot, which is given by the expression here. One thing to note here, we have assumed that omega 2 is known or the mechanism is driven by the crank. However, this assumption was only required after this step, after we formed these equations. It was not required to form these equations. So if you have a slider crank mechanism where the slider is the driver, that is, you know the velocity d dot, you can compute both omega 2 and omega 3 by solving the system of two linear equations in two variables. In that case, omega 2 and omega 3 would be the unknowns. Everything else would be known. Let us now look at the acceleration analysis problem for the slider crank mechanism. Formally, the acceleration analysis problem can be stated as follows. Given the link lengths, the angles theta 2 and theta 3, the position of the slider d, the angular velocity is omega 2 omega 3, the linear velocity of the slider d dot, and the input angular acceleration alpha 2 of the crank, we have to compute the angular acceleration of the coupler denoted by alpha 3 and the linear acceleration of the slider denoted by d double dot. I will again remind you that when performing acceleration analysis, we assume that both the position analysis and the velocity analysis has been done. That is, we know the positions theta 2, theta 3 d, as well as the angular velocities omega 2, omega 3, and the linear velocity d dot. The method for performing the acceleration analysis of the slider crank mechanism is again analogous to what we did for the four bar mechanism. We will start with the loop closure equations at the velocity level. And since this equation has to be true as the mechanism moves, so the time derivative of the left hand side also has to be equal to zero. Now the time derivative of the first term here gives me the first term in the parenthesis. The time derivative of the second term gives the second term in the parenthesis. And the time derivative of the last term here 
is simply written as d double dot. In the first module of lecture 9, we have seen how to take this kind of a derivative. To refresh your memory, I will do the key steps here. d dt of j a omega 2 e to the power of j theta 2 is equal to j a e to the power of j theta 2 times d dt of omega 2 plus j a omega 2 times d dt of e to the power of j theta 2. We can write this using the product rule and noting the fact that omega 2 and theta 2 are functions of time. Now d dt of omega 2 I can write as alpha 2 and d dt of e to the power of j theta 2 gives me j omega 2 e to the power of j theta 2 as we have seen before. So j omega 2 times j omega 2 e to the power of j theta 2 gives me minus omega 2 square a e to the power of j theta 2 by noting that j square equal to minus 1. So that's how we get this first term here. The second term can be obtained analogously by the time derivative of the second term here. Now again, we will expand this complex exponentials to simplify this expression. In going from this expression to this expression, we note that j e to the power of j theta 2 gives minus sine theta 2 plus j cos theta 2. Similarly, j e to the power of j theta 3 gives minus sine theta 3 plus j cos theta 3. And e to the power of j theta 2 is simply cos theta 2 plus j sine theta 2. And e to the power of j theta 3 is cos theta 3 plus j sine theta 3. Now let's just look at this step that j e to the power of j theta 2 is minus sine theta 2 plus j cos theta 2. This is simple algebra. So j e to the power of j theta 2 equals to j cos of theta 2 plus j sine theta 2 which is equal to j cos theta 2 plus j square sine theta 2 and j square is minus 1. So I get this expression. Now from here, equating the real and the imaginary parts to 0, I get these two expressions. The first equation comes from the real part and the second equation comes from the imaginary part. Since we have done this exercise numerous times before, I will leave it to you to verify that these two equations can be indeed obtained by equating the real and imaginary part to zero of this equation here. So now in this equation, you will note that my unknowns are alpha 3 and d double dot. And in the second equation, the only unknown that I have is alpha 3. So from the second equation, I can solve for alpha 3 and the expression is given here. And once we have solved for alpha 3, we can use the first equation to get d double dot. So here again, you will see that the velocity and the acceleration analysis of the slider crank mechanism is much simpler than the position analysis.